And let us pray. Ama naming Diyos, maraming salamat po sa hapon ay binigay niyo sa amin. Maraming salamat po sa oras na ito. Maraming salamat po at kami po ay inyong idinako sa lugar na ito. Dalangin ko po na kayo po ang patuloy na manguna. Sumama at gumabay sa magbabahagi ng inyong salita. Bigyan niyo po kami ng buhay na gagaling sa inyong salita at pakainin niyo po kami, Panginoon, sa pamagitan ng inyong salita. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Ito po ang dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Yan, palapakan natin ang ating Panginoong Diyos. And before we start or before we hear the message, uh, tayo muna ay maaupo and then let's prepare our heart as we listen to this song. Ang paglalaw nitong mga kalungkutan Iyong alalahanin may amang na mamahal Let's read John John chapter 15 verses 15 ay 5 to 17. Verse 5, Ako ang puno ng ubas at kayo ang mga sanga, ang nanatili sa akin at ako sa kanya. Ang siyang nagbubunga ng sagana sapagkat wala kayong magagawa kung kayo'y hiwalay sa akin. Ang hindi nanatili sa akin gaya ng sanga ay itinapon at natutuyo. Ang ganoong mga sanga ay tinitipon, inihahagi sa apoy at nasusunog. Kung nananatili kayo sa akin at nananatili sa inyo ang aking mga salita, hingin ninyo ang anumang nais ninyo at matutupad iyon para sa inyo. Napapa, napaparangalan ang aking ama kung kayo'y masaganang nagbubunga at sa, gayoy, at sa ganon kayo'y magiging mga alagad ko. Kung paanong inibig ako ng ama, gayon din naman iniibig ko kayo. Manatili kayo sa aking pag-ibig. Kung tinutupad ninyo ang aking mga utos, mananatili kayo sa aking pag-ibig. Kung paanong tinupad ko ang mga utos ng aking ama at kayo'y nanatili sa kanyang pag-ibig. Sinabi ko sa inyo, ang mga bagay na ito, Upang mapasa inyo ang kagalakan ko at nang sa gayon ay malubos ang inyong kagalakan. Ito ang aking utos. Magmahalan kayo gaya ng pagmamahal ko sa inyo. Ang pinakadakilang pag-ibig na maaaring taglayin ng sinuman para sa kanyang mga kaibigan ay ang alay ang ay ang iaalay ang kanyang buhay para sa kanila. Kaya't mga kaibigan ko, kung tinutupad ninyo ang aking mga utos, hindi ko na kayo ituturing ng mga alipin. Sapagkat hindi alam ng alipin ang ginagawa ng kanyang Panginoon. Sa halip, itunuring ko kayo mga kaibigan. Sapagkat sinabi ko sa inyo ang lahat ng naririnig ko sa aking ama. Hindi kayo ang pumili sa akin, ako ang pumili sa inyo. Hinirang ko kayo upang kayo'y humayo. at magbunga at manatili sa inyong bunga. Sa gayon, ang anumang hingin ninyo sa Ama sa aking pangalan ay ibibigay sa inyo. Last verse, ito nga ang utos ko sa inyo. Magmahalan kayo. Okay, hello everyone. Good to see you. Uh, I prepare my testimony. Wait a minute. Okay, I will share my screen. Uh, thankfully, we finished reading Genesis. There are 50 chapters 
and now we finish all of them. And uh, as I read the Genesis with you, I have one testimony. That's what I want to share today. Okay, uh, let me start. Uh, my title is that my attachment to Jesus. And then uh, John chapter 15, verse 5 to 17. Thank you for reading the text. Uh, can you see these trees? These trees? They are all the same. Uh, in Korea, there, uh, there are four seasons in Korea. And then I took the picture by season. Unfortunately, I took, did not uh, took the, the picture when it was snowed. But anyway, they are all the same trees. But uh, which which season is the most beautiful to you? Which season? Spring, summer, fall, winter. For me, spring is the most beautiful. I just amazed the same tree can be different colors like this. But what I want to say here is that every moment is necessary in their life cycle. So they need the spring. And then after that, they will have the summer like this. And then after summer, they have fall. And after fall, they will have the winter. No leaves. They look like dried and then dead. But after winter, they will have the spring again. So for the, these trees, every moment, every season is a very, very important. So that is same with us. All of us sometimes are very beautiful, successful, but sometimes we, we really struggle with our hardship, but all those things are necessary in our life cycle so that we can have the, a beautiful life in the end. So my attachment to Jesus, today I wanna share about my core is in Jesus. And then I wanna share about my outward responsibility. So the, my core should be in Jesus Christ, right? So Jesus in me and I in him. So my core in Jesus Christ. And then as I stay, as I dwell in Jesus Christ, what should I do? That is what I want to share today. First of all, enduring. Second is persevering. And third is bearing fruits. Specifically, I want to share these three things. So as I stay in Jesus Christ, as I attach it to Jesus Christ, I should endure, persevere, and bear fruits. So what can I do? Especially when I face struggles, hardship, or a crisis, what should we do? First of all, endure. Endure. So question here, what will Jesus want me to endure? I ask it in myself. Since the last year, uh, because of the COVID, I stayed in Korea. And then I asked God, Lord, what do you want me to endure? And then I realized that God, Jesus want me endure now. My current si situation, rather than avoid it. Jesus want me endure that moment now. So, and then Jesus wants me to endure everything that we love, stressful things. What is stressful to you? Study, money, uh, more friends, your family, everything that you put the stressful, that is what you should endure. And then the another thing is that endure something very hard that you say to God, Lord, it is too tough to endure it. Lord, I cannot do it. I cannot endure. I do not want to endure anymore. If we have something that Jesus want me to endure that. Very tough, right? Why, do, why God does not give the easy way? Why God does not give the short way? But as I in, um, go through the 2022 up to now, I realize that Jesus wants me to endure now and something that I really hard to endure. That is because Jesus said that we will bear much fruit when we abide in him. 
John 3, uh, John chapter 15, verse 5, that if we stay in Jesus Christ, we will bear fruit. So here, important thing is, it's not matter of the speed. It is mentioned that Jesus mentioned only fruit. So we want to shortcut. We don't want any hardship. We just want to make the fruit. But Jesus said that we will bear much fruit when we abide in him. He did not mention that we will bear much fruit quickly. The speed may vary, but all of us are growing and bear fruit if our core is attached to Jesus. So in the Bible, there are, uh, especially in Genesis, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all of them, their life was not easy, never easy at all, very tough, but still good. Maybe most of us pray for no war in life regarding our goal, study, job, health, money, relationship, and with others, etc. right? We want to pass the school in the interview. We want to be healthy. We want to be rich. We want to achieve our goal. However, here are two options. Is it possible to live no war in life because we are Christian? Or number two, can we be well and resilient though we face hardship and conflicts? Okay, do we have to pray that no worry life or do we have to pray to be well and resilient even in our hardship? So let us think about the God and Abraham. You remember him, right? God and Abraham in the Bible. God promised to give uh, Isaac to Abraham and Sarah. Okay, God promised to give uh, Isaac to Abraham and Sarah. But you know, when God gave Isaac to Abraham, when he was 100 years. And the, word, the, the other thing is that God tested Abraham to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. Can you imagine that God gave, God promised Abraham, I will make you big nation. But he did not give him any son until he became 100 years old. And then finally, God gave him a son. But later, God wanted him to offer his son, Isaac. He, Isaac was a promised son. But God wanted to offer him. But, you know, Abraham obeyed it. So Abraham waited, waited, waited. Sobra Mahabana waited. Pasensha Namasha. But his end is very good because God keep his promise. In the case of the Isaac, he also have a lot of ups and downs as the ups and down, right? He was very, he was born as a promised, but he was on the altar. He had many ups and downs. You know, he lost his mother and he's lost his father. We never want to lose, want to separate from our parents, but look. Isaac, Isaac also lost his father because they are grow uh, old. And, but you know, he also married Rebecca. So a lot of conflicts in his life was, but though Isaac went through many struggle in his life, he was well, thanks to God, amen. Isaac goes through all the hardship, not easy, but still good. He was well, thanks to God. How about Jacob? Jacob's life, more, I think his life was really tough because as a mother, I can imagine that how sorrow, how sad if I lose my child, right? Jacob lost, Jacob thought that his favorite son died. But when he was 130 years old, and then that was the second year of the famine. That was the great joy came to him because he knew and met Joseph in the end. And he lived there 17 years. And then, you know, as God promised him, Joseph was with him. And Joseph brought Jacob to Canaan after he, the death of the Jacob. So Jacob's life, very tough, not easy, but still good. 
How about Joseph? Joseph, a lot of ups and downs, more downs, I think. But when in the end, when he met his parents, he confessed like this. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. So he knew that his life was not easy. Maybe he could feel angry with his brothers because they hated him and sold him. But whatever it happened, in the end, Joseph realized that everything according to God's will, it was not easy but it is worthy and very wonderful for his life. It is not only for him, it is for many, many people. And then we see that Joseph's lives, we see that beyond our, their expectation, God has been preparing a bigger picture, right? God secured Joseph's life in any situation. God transformed the Jacob, Joseph, and his father's the, the, God made them mature. And God also showed the miracle. They never imagined Joseph's success, success and they never imagined, um, uh, imagined the surviving solution that God prepared for them, even in the severe famine. So who is God in Genesis? As we see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, we see that God who fulfills his purpose for his promised people, covenant people. So we have to endure now and every hour stressful things. And the next one is persevering. So here is my question, until when? How much will Jesus want me to seek perseverance in my life? When Pastor, all of my family except Susie, all of us are positive for the COVID-19. And then I ask God, until when and how much do I have to endure? Do I have to persevere? And then in my prayer, it is answering the persevering our challenge until we see and acknowledge God's big picture. As I read the Genesis with you, as I go through the, all my real struggles because of the COVID-19. Finally, I see the God's big picture now. So I can say that persevering our challenges until we see and acknowledge God's picture and pray. We have to pray about what? No worry life? No. Pray not to be disappointed with our tough reality until we see God's big picture. Before we see God's big picture, we cannot understand the God. I also could not understand why God make us positive for the COVID-19. That's not fault of God, but I just complained to God. But the later, when I endure, when I persevere, until I see God's big picture, now I confess that, oh, I see God's big picture. God changed all my struggle to the big picture. So finally, after enduring and persevering until we see God's big picture, we have to bear fruits. Do you know her? Everybody know her, right? She's very famous now. She is the Olympic gold medalist, Hidalin Diaz, expressed a most gratitude to God and her supporters after becoming the first Filipino to win a gold medal in the Olympics. I think all, most of you know that her achievement, gold medalist, and the, she got the new house, new car, a lot of rewards, cash rewards. So maybe we will envy her. Wow, you are very lucky because you got the gold medal as a Filipino, first Filipino, and then you got the car and the house, a lot of cashes. But, you know, we have to know her past. This was not the first to try her. In 2008, she was the second to the last. And she tried again in 2012. And in 2016, she tried again. Now she finally got the silver medal. And then even in the pandemic, Tokyo Olympic, she joined Tokyo Olympic, right? And then she got the gold medal. So people for, 
got about her three trials since 2008. People tend to focus on the gold medal this moment. One more thing, it is her hands. People look at only gold medal, but we Christians have to see this one. When she finally confess, grab and see God, we have to see her old trials and errors, her struggle, her emotional pain, but she kept going on. She endured and persevered until he, she could see God's big picture. And finally, she bare the fruits. Finally, she proclaimed gravity God. So God has a perfect timing, never early, never late. It takes a little patience. But it is not, we do not want to patient, but right? And it takes a lot of faith, yes, but it's worth to wait. Because so this is I quote from the Facebook. I think this is really perfect in my testimony. So we have to bear fruits. We do not know what comes next to us after our current situation. The Bible teaches us that Jesus allows our core to be attached to our Jesus Christ. And he tells us to love one another. Jesus said that we should attach it to Jesus, right? But that's not the end. After that, after we attach it to Jesus, after we abide in him, we should love others. John, John chapter 15, verse 12 to 17. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servant, for the servant do not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. You should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. Did the things I command you so that you will love another. So here we, we can see that God, Jesus chose us. And we should abide in him to make the fruits. And then we have to make a fruits. And then finally he said, I command you, love one another. So after we abide in him, love is our next text. Task. So what to bear? Love. We want to achieve many personal goals, but among them, love should be our first and foremost fruit. As Jesus loved us first, let us love others first. So do not fear. In the middle of our covenant journey, we might face several challenges and hardship that make us doubt the God's promise and force us to stop our step. We doubt God's promise and we want to stop. Nevertheless, do not fear. If you are carrying God's promise, you should remember the end of our story is achievement, not the struggle. Trust me, because God said that we, our end is not the struggle. Our end would be the achievement if it is God's promise. So here I prepare uh, my testimony applying uh, John chapter 15, verse five to my story. Okay, as you know, uh, I went to Korea in April 1st, 2020, okay? From that moment up to now, I made the, some uh, comic strips like this. Uh, John chapter 15, verse five said that Jesus is the vine, amen? Jesus is the vine and we are branches. That is what John chapter 15. Okay, so uh, as you expect, I'm not at draw, I'm not good at drawing at all, but I just want to visualize for a better uh, understanding of my testimony. So 2000, uh, I'm a missionary, as you know, in the Philippines since 2006, and then by God's grace, 
I have ministered uh, since 2006 with many fruits. That is God's grace. God's grace made me bear many fruits. However, I faced many struggles that pressed me down too hard to endure. There are many struggles since 2006, but this one is super strong. That was COVID-19. As you know, all my family, except the, my eldest girl, all are positive. So my husband, Pastor Ikin, was a critical case, so he was at risk of his death. He was in the hospital um, 76 days, and he did the self-quarantine 15, uh, 14 days. Though we, I was a COVID-19, I have many responsibilities as a missionary, as a mother, and then I also study. But I continued it. I Bible reading, cell group meeting, online worship. And another press down is the instability. For six months, I tra transferred my house eight times. The last one is most painful, family health issue. Pastor Gim was really, really sick, and all my family were sick uh, with different symptoms. That was very tough to endure. And another painful thing is church member sickness. Whenever I heard that the church members are sick, my heart is broken because I cannot be there, especially when somebody passed away. I really cry alone. So those all those things really press me down. And then I say, Lord, I cannot endure anymore. I cannot do it anymore. Mm -hmm. However, my core was at Jesus Christ. My core was attached to Jesus Christ. That's why I could, I can say that I could survive. You know, when my core is attached to Jesus, I could survive from COVID-19 and emotional burden. I confess that I also struggle with a lot of emotional burden and physical pain because of the COVID-19, but I could survive because my core was in Jesus Christ. And I could endure my responsibility and instability. All my responsibility and instability really pressed me down, but I could endure all of them because my core was attached to Jesus Christ. And then also, amazing thing is that I experienced God's healing upon my family and church members. So whenever I heard that they got healed, when they survived from their sickness, I praise God. So all those things make me up, you know, by my strengths, never. All things are possible because my core was attached to Jesus Christ. I confess that Jesus was in me and I was in Jesus. That's why I could survive, I could endure, I could experience God's healing power, though I cannot do it alone. I'm not strong, but God made me strong because my core was attached to God. So here, I have to remember why God gave me us again. Why God made me survive, endure, and experience God's healing power. That's because God want me to love others. God empower me. God strengthen me so that I can love others and support others to go through their hardship. You know, that is God's grace. God empower me and use me to support and love somebody else so that they can also survive, endure, and experience. So I praise God. In my life, John chapter 15, verse 5, summarized my uh, almost two years life. Very tough, very hard, very difficult, but still good. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. 
really hard to endure, hard to persevere, and of course, hard to bear for us. I, however, let's trust in John chapter 15, verse five. God promised if we remain in him and then if Jesus in us, we will bear much fruit, though it take long, though we have to endure a lot. As Jacob confessed, I also confess that after reading the whole Genesis, I also confess that God is a promise keeper. God is good shepherd. God is almighty God. That is what I experienced as I stay in Korea. God promise keeper. God keep all the promises in my prayer. God is a good shepherd. God protect us even in the, at the risk of death. God's almighty power lead us up to this moment. So our youth, though your life is full of hardship, please remember God in Genesis, promise keeper, good shepherd, almighty God. And then please remember John chapter 15, verse five, never give up trusting in God. If you stay in him and then Jesus in you, you will bear much fruit, though it take long. Do not give up. Fading forward. Thank you very much. God bless you. Ayan. So, di ba ang ganda na message natin yan? Yung pinaka... Tumatak sa isip ko doon, sabi ni sabi doon, God has a perfect timing for all of us. Let us endure anything until we see the big picture of what God has planned for us. So meron lang ako i-share kasi habang nakikinig ako sa sermon ni Samuni, meron akong naalalang story sa Bible. So naalala niyo yung story sa Bible where Jesus is sleeping in a, in a boat tapos andun yung mga disciple niya kasama niya si Peter tapos yung iba pa alam ko sa, sa Matthew yun eh tapos umulan ng malakas so si Jesus natutulog so syempre yung mga yung mga disciple ginising siya sabi bakit umuulan ganyan ganyan so yun yung isa sa favorite kong story sa Bible kasi naisip ko bakit yung mga disciple yung faith nila na shaken eh, alam naman nilang andun si Jesus and parang nagalit sila di ba sabi nila Jesus gumising ka ano parang ganun so minsan kasi di ba tayo as a Christian yung minsan yung mali nating nagagawa is feeling natin porkit kasama natin si Jesus we have immunity in all of the struggle struggles pero di ba God never promised immunity in the storm pero pinramis niya na he will be there with us in the middle of the storm. So, ayun, gusto ko na, ayun, malaman nyo lang na dadaan at dadaan tayo dyan. ba? Diba? Pero hindi tayo mag-isang dadaan dyan kasi kasama natin si Jesus. Kasi He is, he is forever faithful, stronger. And let us all stand up and let us sing forever. Sound. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love ends or is forever. So good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Let's sing. Forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is strong. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever. 
thanks to the Lord King. His love ends always forever. For He's so good, He's above all things. His love ends always forever. Sing praise. His love endures forever. His love endures forever, forever. Let's sing His love. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever, forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever, forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. forever. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. Now let's sing what a beautiful name. Without us, 
So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. my key what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus is my key. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. The veils are before you. You silence the birth of sin and grave. The heavens are rolling. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Because you have no Pag-usapan na ito, nanigay mo sa bawat isa, Lord God. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa sanday nito pinagkalaw mo sa bawat isa. Upang awitan ka, papurihan ka, at magaling ang salita mo. Kung patuloy na sumamang sa amin, Panginoon, as we endure all the challenges, Panginoon, and struggle that we may face, Panginoon, sa buhay ng bawat isa. 
pagpatuloy ng sumama, Panginoon, as we face this salamay, Panginoon. And with you, Panginoon, I know we can do all things, Lord God. Ikaw po ang patuloy na manguna. Ito ang um, pang aming panalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So this afternoon, let's um, give naman yung ating offering sa ating Panginoon. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this afternoon na pinagsama-sama niyo po kami. Thank you po sa mga biyaya ang binibigay ninyo sa amin. Uh, salamat po dahil nakapagwasa na naman po kami ng Bible ngayong araw. Binabalik po namin itong offering na ito. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Yan. So this time, let's give a clap offering sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Let's give Him a clap offering. Yan. So announcement po. Number one is Mary... Merry Christmas! Ayan, ilang days na lang. Ilang days? Ano date nyo yun? 19. And then ilang days na lang? Six days. And we celebrate Christmas because our uh, Savior was born. Diba? And the number two, social distance with your mask is what we can do to worship our God together. And then number three, Lord's Day worship at 10.30 a.m. Number four, thank you uh, all the volunteers for joining General Cleaning yesterday. Yan. Palakpakan natin lahat sila yan. Napakalinis sa ating church and let's continue or maintain yung cleanliness ng ating Panginoon. Sabi nga, di ba, cleanliness is get next to godliness. And then number five is uh, meron po tayong Christmas special message from Lamb Leader. So next week. And, and then number six is Christmas worship on December 26, 2021. So please come and join Christmas worship. It will be the last worship of 2021. And Another announcement, um, as I heard yung um, testimony ni Samonim about uh, what she's experienced uh, in the past two years ago or from uh, nag-start yung lockdown, di ba? We heard yung um, kanyang testimony kanina. And then I encourage you, Lam, can we do our testimony last uh, next week? Yan, because uh, next Sunday is the last Sunday of our of this year, di ba? So ano yung kaya nating mapapag, uh, may pagpasalamat sa may pagpasalamat sa ating Panginoong Diyos sa pamagitan ng ating um, testimony. Tandaan niyo yung testimony natin. Huwag niyo itaguya, huwag niyo ikahiya. Marami tayong pinagdaanan up and downs and we would like to hear your testimony and challenges. And then yung um pinagdaanan ng bawat isa sa atin. Lahat tayo naka-experience ng struggle but then I encourage lamp next week uh, sana tayo ay magbigay ng ating um, testimony as I, as we heard dun sa testimony din ni Samonim, di ba? Napakahirap and then I know all of us may mga pinagdaanan and i-share nyo naman. Ayun, share nyo yan. So, and then Next week, yon 
sa number five diba sinabi, meron tayong Christmas special message from Lamp Leaders. So let's see sino yung um, ating bisita ng time na yan. <laughs> yan, yung magbe-message sa atin. And then, uh, ayun lang. So let's stand up. Yan, tayo tayong lahat. Tayo ay tumayo and then let's recite our Lord's Prayer. Let's recite. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, palakpakan natin ang ating Panginoong Diyos. See you next Sunday. So, sa next Sunday, we would like to hear your testimonies. Even yung mga nasa Zoom. Ayan. Okay, It's nice to see you. Let's celebrate yung last Sunday natin. For this year. One. One, two, three. Shut. Oh. <laughs> Isa pa, isa pa. Isa pa. Wow! Hello! Hi, guys! So, so ako po lang. Wow, okay. Thank you! Thank you!